Praise the Lord. The singing sure has been great today. Amen. Praise the Lord. It is good to have Brother Aquila Daramani with us from Ghana. And of course, uh, we first met him when he was on deputation before he was married. And uh, now he's married and has two children. He's not a stranger to us. We had him at the uh, teen extravaganza a few years ago. And it's good to have him back with us. I was so pleased when I got that call or and he let me know that uh, he was in the States and would like to come to Canada. And I said, well, we'd like to have you. <laughs> and so uh, just praise the Lord the way the timing all worked out for that. It sure is good to have you here, brother. You come preach to us. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. Now, how many of you were here during the Sunday school? Okay, good. Did you understand my accent? Just want to be clear so that I know <laughs> whether I should slow down or. Uh, but it's good to be here once again. And as Pastor said, my name is Aquila Darmani uh, from uh, Ghana, West Africa. Um, I'm a missionary there also. So uh, people ask me, How long have you been <laughs> in Ghana? You know, on mission. I said, I don't know. A long time. I was born there. I raised there and then came to Wisconsin for school education and then I went back. Um, Lost willing, this evening I'll be sharing more about the ministry and what we do and then my family. Uh, they are not with me uh, today. They didn't get a visa to come, but I have one long time ago. So uh, I came to do some other things at, in the state and it's very easy to come from the state to here. Well, COVID is making it not easy again, but uh, I was glad that I had that opportunity to come. Let's turn our Bibles to Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 1. Uh, let's pray, and then we will go ahead. Father, we thank you so much that we are not in the dark. We know that God is light, and in him, there is no darkness at all. And Lord, you want us to have fellowship with you. Lord, we have come this morning. Would you hush our hearts and mind and soul so that we will listen to you. Help us to be still and know that you are God in our lives. Uh, bless the service. Uh, may your grace, may your Holy Spirit open our hearts. Lord, so that we magnify you. We make you big. In this time, that your name will receive the glory and honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Um, there are so many things that when you travel, you get to see changed. You know, in different places, in different times. But I'm so thankful that we have someone that no matter where you go, who you are, never changes. His name is Jesus Christ. And I know, you know, the, the mention of the name Jesus is now becoming foreign to us. Very foreign. You know, I don't know how Canada is um, with its political stuff and government, but the world is taking Jesus Christ out from, you know, their schools, hospitals. You talk about it. The world doesn't want to do anything with Jesus Christ. And it has been that long time ago. You know, it is not a very new thing. Uh, throughout history, if you learn history, you realize that, yes, the world is against Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible said he came unto his own, and his own received him not. And so you realize that that has been just the way things work. And it, it, is, it, is, it is bad. We don't want that to happen. But as you travel, and if you've been in a lot of churches as, as me, I think the scary thing is that churches are taking Jesus Christ out from. That is the scary one. You know, people don't, don't want to do anything with Jesus Christ. It's all about somebody else. It's all about maybe the Holy Spirit. Now, I, I know, you know, we, we live in a time that we have the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I'm not minimizing him. But Jesus said that he will magnify me. Yeah, right. It's all about Jesus. Right. 
You know, it's not about my standard. It's not about the church that I go to. It's about him. I, I tell people, you know, you can be wrong on a lot of things and go to heaven. You know that. But if you are wrong on Jesus Christ, you will not go to heaven. You will not. And, 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 and now Christianity want to make Jesus Christ fit into what they want. Everybody wants a definition of Jesus Christ. You know, everybody wants the Jesus that will give him a nice house, a good car, a happy home. Of course, who doesn't want this, this kind of Jesus Christ? I want him. I want the Jesus that will heal me, heal my body, heal my daughter, Carolinda, you know, you know, make life good for me. Is it not the good life that we want? You know, when they tell you, if you accept Jesus Christ, everything will be fine. <laughs> and you have a definition of fine, you know, in your, in your mind. And then when you come, it's not that way. Jesus Christ is more than that. He is more than that. He is God. And, and today I think what I'm going to say, you, you've heard it, you know, several times. But what, may I remind you who Jesus is? You know, and, and, and let's see in, in my box of where Jesus is. Is he the one I'm thinking? So this morning I want us to reawaken our wonder about this man called Jesus Christ. Yeah. Who is he? Who is he to me? And then how do I respond to him? When I know who he is. Then how, you know that when you know about who somebody is, it changes your relationship with that fellow. I was in Arizona and uh, somebody, you know, almost all the church people, hey, you need to go to the Grand Canyon. How many of you have been there? The Grand Canyon. I haven't, you know. Well, you know a few people have been there. Well, that's okay. You haven't missed anything, you know. Uh, I haven't been there, so I don't know, but. Uh, <laughs> um, and so they told me, hey, you, you should go there and all those things. So um, Saturday in the morning, I wake this. I said, how many hours from here? He said, oh, it's about four hours. I said, okay. I have a car. Somebody borrowed me a car. So, so I took my breakfast between nine, you know, cruising to Grand Canyon. I didn't get there, you know. <laughs> Because the police made sure I didn't. Um, so while I was going, you know, I saw the blue light. Here is the police light blue or red, whatever. In, um, in the state, it's blue, you know. Um, so I saw, I said, oh, no. Ah, this black guy, you know. So I pulled over. And then um, they came and they said, hey, you know, do you know why we, we stopped? I said, no, I don't. He said, well, you were falling too close to the summer. <laughs> So I said, okay, so let me see your papers. I saw it and said, oh, no, you cannot drive. You cannot drive in the state. I said, really? I had my license in the state. So, well, cast 10 short, he gave me a ticket, two tickets, sum up to $325. I said, said, whoa, I don't have the money. (laughs) I cannot pay. I'm a student. I cannot pay. He said, well, go and talk to, to the judge about that. And they booked me in July. So I said, well, I'm leaving here. I will not be here in June. You know, I'm going. So Monday, the pastor and I were going. The pastor said, well, let's try to get somebody that will speak to us, a judge. I said, I don't want somebody to speak to us. I want us not to pay. I don't have the money. So, you know, that is when you catch up with your devotions, you know, (laughs) asking the Lord, God, you know, all the prayers get in. I made sure I did that, you know. And then... So when we got there, you know, I went to a window and I was talking to this lady, explaining my way out to her. And then there was a, a, a middle-aged woman just standing casually, listening to what was going on. And then she said, oh, okay, let me see your uh, visa and uh, your license. So I gave it to him, her and then she went, she went somewhere. So I came and sat down for about 30 minutes. She wasn't coming. And then one lady came and said, has the lady come? I said, no. He said, don't worry. She is the manager of the court. She will get you a judge. Do you know it changed everything? I, I felt comfortable. Because now I'm not dealing with just somebody. I'm dealing with what? The manager of the judge. 
Now, in Ghana, if you are a manager, oh, yeah, you have, you have posts. You have position. You can tell people what they have to do. So I was sitting there, and then the manager came and said, I'm sorry. You know, I, the judge, two of them were on vacation, and the one is busy. So I went to her, him, and I said, you know, just cancel everything. And so they cancel everything as if I wasn't stopped by the police. And he said, she said, you are free to go. I am so sorry that you couldn't go to enjoy your Grand Canyon. I said, thank you, but I'm also glad that I'm not paying for the money. <laughs> or I said that because when I was going there, I was tensed. You know, there was tension in me. I don't know what I'm going to. But immediately I know who she was. It changed my response. I knew that this is a, I've, I've applied to the right person. When you know who Jesus is, it changes your life. It, it changes what you, what you eat. <laughs> How you see the political arena. Everything, it changes about your family. And so in our, in our, in our, in our place, Hebrews chapter 1 the, the, the writer of Hebrew began, he said, God who at sundry times in diverse manners speak time past unto our fathers by the prophet. God has always been speaking. Yeah. All the time throughout history. He said, long time ago he spoke to us through the prophets. Has in this last day spoken unto us by his son. He said, but in this last day there's someone he has spoken to us by. Jesus Christ. His son is Jesus Christ there. Who he has appointed uh, of all things by whom also he made the world. Who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. When he has by himself purged our sins, he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. This is the summation of who Jesus is. Simple put, he is God. Amen. Do you think that Jesus is God? Yeah. You know, sometimes we, 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 we try to separate them. You know, Jesus Christ is a means for me to go to God. <laughs> He's not. He is God. In fact, Philip came to him and said, I show us the Father that it suffices us. And Jesus Christ said, have I been so long time with you and yet you don't know me? <laughs> he that have seen me have seen the Father. Amen. When it comes to the person of Jesus Christ, we are dealing with deity in humanity. We are dealing with the God, very God. There is no excuse or mistake for you to say that God, Jesus is God. He is God. Fully God. The creator of the universe. The one that holds everything together. His name is Jesus Christ. The description of God in the Old Testament is the Jesus you see in the New Testament. That is the, the you know the Bible is in a, there's a lot of mysteries in the Bible that we might never understand or know. But there is one thing that the Bible is very clear about. Jesus is God. In fact, that was the very reason why they killed him. Because he said he is God. So, uh, before we get to our text, let's allow maybe the, the scripture that talks about Jesus Christ to describe who God is. Who Jesus Christ is. To us, not what I think, not my opinion. John says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of all men. The Bible said that, and the word became flesh. And dwelled among us. And we beheld his glory. The glory as the only begotten of the father. Full of grace and truth. Jesus said in John chapter 8, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my days. And he saw it 
And, and the Pharisees said, well, you, ha- you are not even 50 years. How can Abraham see your days? He said, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. This is Jesus Christ. Yeah. Now, you know English more than I do, right? <laughs> English is my third language. So, that is a wrong English. Before Abraham was, I am. That's wrong English, right? It is wrong. Before Abraham was, I was, right? <laughs> That is more acceptable in our English cult, in our language. Um, but he is right because he quoted the Old Testament. When, Jesus, when God appeared to Moses, and Moses said, who should I tell the people who you are? And then God said, I am. I am that I am Jehovah. So here Jesus Christ is saying that before Abraham was Jehovah. I am Jehovah. I am God. Without me, there's nothing. Thomas comes to him and said, Lord, show us the way. That, you know, we'll know where you are going. He said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man cometh unto the Father except through me. John chapter 12, verse 45. He that hath seen me hath seen the Father that sent me. Colossians, he said, in him dwelleth all the fullness of Godhead bodily. Yeah, that is Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus to you? Is he your, your body? Do, do, do you think that he's on the same plane with you? Now, do you think that you can push him around? Make him do your bidding? He, 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 he's not that. He's God. He's God. Look at what Colossians said. In whom, you know, who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created. That are in heaven and that are on earth. Visible and invisible. Whether they be dominions or principalities or powers. All things were made by him. And without him. There's nothing that was made. Wow. He said that he holds the universe together. That's right. It is God. It is Jesus Christ. Amen. Don't be ashamed of him. Amen. Don't be ashamed of him. He's our God. Yet, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Therefore he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The Bible says, wherefore God also has highly exalted him, Amen. that in the name of Jesus Christ, every knee will bow of things in heaven and things on earth and things under the earth. And every tongue shall confess that Jesus is God. He is God. He commit no sin. When you think that Jesus Christ is just like you, think about that. He commit no sin. None who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. First Peter chapter 2. For he, that is God, made him to be sin for us. Who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God. It is because of Jesus Christ that you and I are sitting here today. And it's because of Jesus Christ that we have a relationship with God. We don't have right with God. But Jesus made it possible for us. He said Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. We are free because of Jesus Christ. Who has in his own self bore our son. Wow. You see, when, when, when it comes to Jesus Christ, you wonder this man. You know, the world cannot explain him. <laughs> they can't. Religion cannot cut him off. And we can spend the rest of our time describing who Jesus Christ is. And we cannot even begin to scrap who that man is because he is God. He is God. All authority in heaven and on earth is given to him. The Father loved the Son and has given him all power. God has put in everything under his feet. He's the head of the body, the, the church. He's the reason why we are here. 
He has authority to forgive. He speaks and the wind obey. Go and do that. <laughs> Go and speak to the wind. He walked on water. <laughs> now, you know, in Canada, you can walk on water, right? In February, March. <laughs> ah. The wings and the waves were blowing. He walked on water. He commanded unclean spirit and they came out. He rebuked fever and they departed. He caused the blind to see, the deaf to hear, the lame to walk again. In fact, he went to a funeral and then the corpse followed him back to home. He spoke and the dead came back to life. I always, you know, you know imagine what would have happened, somebody said, if he hasn't mentioned Lazarus' name and just said, come out. All the dead would have been coming out. He has that power. And so he wanted, he said, no, let me make sure, Lazarus, you come out. He does. Yet, he has time for the little children. Amen. He has time for them. He says, suffer not the little children and bring them to him. In fact, the Bible says that in him are hid all the treasures of wisdom. His enemy said, no one spoke like Jesus Christ. No one. There's never a man spoken like Jesus Christ. And again, to know him is to know the unsearchable riches of God. And praise the Lord, he's coming back again. <laughs> he's coming back again. You know, the, 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 the angels came and said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gaze into the heavens? This same Jesus, whom you see taken away, shall what? Come in the same manner. He's coming back again. We know the end of the story. Who is Jesus to you in your daily life? How do you see? Now we come to the text, and, and the text explains it, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. Jesus Christ is the radiance of God's glory. Jesus Christ. He is the brightness that shines out from God. He, he, he cannot, if you want to see how God is, look at Jesus Christ. That is what the Bible is telling us. That's why John said, we beheld his glory. The glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. When you behold the, uh, Jesus Christ, we see the manifestation of the glory of God. So when you, you say that you are in the glory of God and you don't see Jesus Christ, you are not in the glory of God. When you say that you are right with God and you don't, your relationship with Jesus Christ is wrong, you don't see Jesus Christ. You are not right with God. Jesus Christ, in, according to our text, it says that he is the, the brightness, the express image. The express image has the idea that Jesus Christ is the exact representation of God's nature. It's like the stamp. You know, if, if God has a stamp and you stamp it, you see Jesus Christ. He is. He, he represents God. He's the engraving, God, the die of God, the Son of God Himself. And, and I believe that was why He was bemoaning the fact that Philip has been with Him and still does not know Him. And how many Christians have we been with Jesus Christ and still we don't know Him? We don't know. People define Jesus Christ for us. And now, nowadays, you cannot even mention Jesus Christ because you blaspheme, you know. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, and people think that you are blaspheming. No, you are not. You have to be careful. He is God. Don't be shy of mentioning his name. And then the verse tells us that he actually sustains the universe by his power. The universe is in existence right now because of Jesus Christ. Not because how well we put we 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 we, we uh, keep things together. No, we can eat all the good food and everything. You know, not 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 burn gases and whatever it is. But if Jesus Christ says that I am tired of the world, guess what? There's no world. 
It's gone. He said the Bible said that he sustains the universe by his powerful hand. The existence, the order, the arrangement, the entire uh, uh, creation continue to spin around and exist because of Jesus Christ. Because of my God. <laughs> because of my Savior. Because of my friend. His word has power and authority. The greatest force on the planet is the words of Jesus Christ. It's the word of Jesus Christ. Consider the storm, as I said. Consider that. You know, Peter was fumbling. And then they wake Jesus Christ and said, Care us not that we perish. He got up and said, Peace be still. Amen. And that was it. Yeah. That's his power. And then the verse tells us that the far, the, the, you know, uh, um, Jesus Christ provides the final and complete cleansing for our sons. He said, who by himself purge our sons? You know that nobody forced Jesus Christ to die for us. It wasn't a suicide death. It wasn't. It was, he said, I lay down my life. I have the power to lay it down, and I have the power to get it back again. Do you know that Christianity is the only religion that has a solution to our son? It is the only religion. That can, that can forgive, that knows how to, to deal with the sin that is sending us to hell. And it was because of Jesus Christ. Amen. He has made us justified before the Lord. Amen. Every day of our life, he sanctified us. And one day, he will glorify us. It's all about him. Friends, it's not about anything else. We are not looking to something and so Jesus Christ gets us there. No, he is that thing that we are looking for in our lives. He's our high priest. He has finished the job for us. There's no more sacrifice. Hey, I don't care where you are. You can come today right now and know that your sins are forgiven. Past, present, and future. And you can know that you have eternal life with Jesus Christ, no, with God because of Jesus Christ. If you don't know it, huh? I pity you. At the, at the end of the you can talk to me. I can show you how you can know that your sons are forgiven and that you have eternal life with God forever and ever. And then you think of the, the encounter, the reaction of people that comes to Jesus Christ. It, it amazes me. Anyone that, that meets Jesus Christ never go away just, just the way he is. Never. They are changed. And sometimes I say I meet Jesus and I'm not changed. There's a problem. Huge one. You know, I told you Jesus Christ is, is the God of the Old Testament. Abraham met him in Matthew, you know, in Genesis chapter 18. And then he, Abraham said, I am but dust and ashes. When he met Jesus Christ. Moses trembled when he saw Jesus Christ at the mountain. Daniel fainted and said, my comeliness is, is turned in me into corruption. You remember Peter, the first time he met Jesus Christ? He said, depart from me, for I am a sinner. Yeah. Depart from me. You see, sometimes we compare ourselves with other people because we haven't met Jesus. When we meet him, we will know where we are. And then he said, depart from me. And then one time he said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And then you remember the beggar? Have mercy on me, thou son of David. Anyone that comes to Jesus Christ have a different name for Jesus Christ. Because he's unique. He's outside the box that we think he is in. All the time, the soldier on the cross said, truly, this is the son of God. He was even an unbeliever. Truly, this is the Son of God. Who is Jesus to you? Isaiah said, for unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders. His name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. The mighty God the everlasting father, the prince of peace. That is Jesus Christ. 
who is, who is it to us in our daily walk? Every day, our moment by moment. Who is it to me in relation to my spouse and my children? Who is Jesus Christ to me on the, work, on the workplace? The vocabulary that comes from my mouth. Who is Jesus Christ? Is he God? Is he God in my life? What should be our response to him? I see some pictures, some pictures coming out. You know, our response, a proper understanding of who Jesus Christ always calls us to respond to him. And the New Testament actually gives us about three, you know, five pictures of who Jesus, our response to him. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Jesus Christ himself is speaking here and he has a picture. Verse 44. He said again, Jesus Christ is talking a lot of power. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field and which when a man has found, he hideth and for the joy, therefore, you know, far, you know, goes and sell it all that he has to buy that field. I see the picture of a treasure. My response to Jesus Christ should be the response of a treasure. A, a very supreme treasure. You know, a, a, something that I want to have in my life. It is the finding of the treasure that I sell everything just to have Jesus Christ. I give it up. I give everything about it. He said, the man found this place and then realized that, wow, all that I have, I want that one. So he went with the joy, sell all those things to have Jesus Christ. If everything is taken away from you and you have Jesus Christ, would you continue to say that God is enough? Would you say that I have everything? Are we looking for something else? As a supreme treasure than Jesus Christ. What is our response to that? The decision to sell all is for the joy of having Jesus Christ. In fact, there is no better treasure than Jesus Christ. None. John chapter 6. Verse 35. There is another picture that... Again, Jesus Christ, you know, said it here. I think this is, this is the, the response for men. You understand why? This is a response for men. Or Baptist, I don't know. Food, you know. Men love food. It's good to have food too. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believe on me shall never thirst. Jesus Christ is saying, come to me, I will satisfy you. So as our lives, what is satisfying us? What is satisfying our lives? Um, technology? Education? A good precedent? What is satisfying my life? Jesus Christ said, look, you want a satisfaction for your soul? Eat me. In fact, somewhere he said in the last day, that great day of the feet, Jesus stood up and cried out, if, if any man tests, let him come unto me. He that drinks me. You see, out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Jesus Christ, we should be satisfied with him alone. He's the only one that is so nutritious and so beneficial for the human soul. The songwriter said, all that thrills my soul is Jesus. He's more than life to me. He said, hallelujah, I have found him whom my soul so long have craved. Jesus satisfied my longing. We live in a world that is hurting, it's longing. We have a lot of soul Quenches, taste quenches, and a lot of things are craving for us. And when you get it, you get nothing. Apart from Jesus Christ, you will never be satisfied. Apart from Jesus Christ, 
Your job will not cut. You can have the best job in the world. You can have the best family in the world. But apart from Jesus Christ, there is no one. In fact, you can eat him and eat him and never think about a diet. You know that? Never think about, you know, am I going to be fat? <laughs> no. He's there for you all the time. Are you hungry? Are you weary and heavy hearted? He said, tell it to Jesus. He's there. And then uh, Matthew chapter 10. There's another, another picture. Another picture. So we've, we've seen a treasure. Food and drink. And then I, I, this one is the family relation. Family relation. Matthew chapter 10 verse 37. Jesus again is speaking. He that loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. What? It's Jesus, it's not, I'm not old enough to write a Bible. You know that. Jesus said, he that loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. It's not. And then he went ahead and said, he that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. My love for Jesus should supersede every earthly love. If not, he said, I'm not worthy of him. I cannot even come to his presence. I, you know, so to be worthy means to put a price on something. To put a price, to, to highly exalt something. And so Jesus Christ said, you cannot even begin to, to exalt me if you don't love me more. You know, hmm. I love my wife. Right now, if I know she will not call, <laughs> but I have my phone in my pocket. In case, it's on vibration, so it will vibrate me. In case my wife does what? Call me. I will, I will respond to the call. Why? I love her. Right? I love her. And those of you that have been smitten by love, you understand perfectly what I'm talking about. And Jesus Christ is saying that if I love my wife or children more than I love him, I'm not, I should forget it. You should forget the ministry. She forget the church planting, the radio ministry is, is not worthy. By the way, he loves us before we love him. You know that. He loves us so much. The only one that knows who you are and still loves you perfectly is Jesus Christ. The only one that knows whatever you've done, the messes you've done. And you know his love will never diminish. Never. You, you will never come to him and say that you are a very wicked sinner. I cannot love you again. It's impossible. In fact, Romans says that who shall separate us from the love of God? Shall tribulation or persecution or distress or famine or sword or nakedness? And then he said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love. Wow. I am loved <laughs> by Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes Christians will say, oh, no one, no one cares about me. It's not true. No one loves me. It's not true. The one that made you loves you. Loves you so much. So unconditional. It's unselfish. It's sacrificial. He will go to the extreme for you. He will pick you up from there. People will misjudge you. He will never misjudge you. He has time for you all the time. You can wake up and call him anywhere you are. And he still listens to you. You are broken. He can mend you. You are discouraged. He can encourage you. Discomforted about life. He can give you the comfort you want. Your soul is searching. He can give you the peace that passes all understanding. And he said, you have to love me more than anything else. Philippians chapter 3, verse 8. I see the picture of excrement. 
dunk. Hmm. That smells, you know, it smells good. The picture. But, but this is what Paul is saying. Paul, Paul gives a snapshot of his life. And he was one of them, you know. Today we will say that he was a PhD guy. He has everything together, a Hebrew of Hebrews. Concerning the, you know, the law, he was blameless, persecuting the church, thinking he was doing things for God. Verse 8, he comes and says, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but lost for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and do count them but dung that I may win Christ. He said, when, when you, if you want me to compare Jesus Christ with all that I have, it stinks. Everything that I have cannot come into comparison of the preciousness of Jesus Christ to me. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold, than to be the king of a vast domain and be held in sin, dread sway. Paul said, look, you can have everything. I have all this, but when I consider Jesus Christ, they sting at me. Is that, is that how we see Jesus Christ in our lives? Every day, every moment, you see a treasure that I love. You see the food and the drink I drink every day and every night in my life. Do I love him more than all? By the way, if you love Jesus right, you will love everybody that needs to be loved. Right. You can do that. He's not saying hate them. No. Love him, everything will fall into the right place. See, when I, when I realize that I'm, not, I'm being mean to my wife, most of the time I realize that my view of Jesus Christ is, is twisted a little bit. When I get right with Jesus Christ, it works in my life. And then lastly, the death wish. The death wish. That, that's a picture. Paul is talking about Philippians chapter 1. You know, he said, for me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. And then he said, verse 23, for I am in a great between two, having the desire to depart, to be with Christ, which is far better. <laughs> which is far. He wished he was with Jesus Christ. He wished today the trumpet has been sounded. How many of us wish that? Oh, God, don't come over. Today the farming is good this year. God, let me let me do that before. God, let me let me let me enjoy my retirement plans before you come. The only thing Christians want is Jesus Christ showing up and messing our lives for us. Paul said, mm -mm, I wish I'm I'm with God. Today. You know, I understood this 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 verse when I was studying when I came. For me personally, Far better is to be in Ghana with my wife, you know. Um, but it's needful for me to be here. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, Paul knows that it is needful for him to be there. But his wish is, I'm going home. Amen. Yep. This wall is not my home. I am just passing through. He said, I am going home. Is that what we have? That I wish I'm with Jesus Christ right now, today. Oh, Jesus, hold on a little bit. Let me, let me take care of these things before you come or before I come home. So to, to sum up our response to Jesus Christ, he is so to be desired as a supreme treasure that we sell all to have him. As a treasure of our life, we sell all to have him. He is so to be desired as a thirst quencher and a soul satisfied that we turn away from all worldly fountains of food and drinks in order to be satisfied by him. He is so to be desired as a family member that our affection for him surpasses all our family love wants. And he is so to be desired as a supreme value that everything in comparison to him is done. And he is so to be desired above what life can give. That death wish 
is for me to be with Jesus Christ. Who is Jesus? He's our El Shaddai. <laughs> He's our God. He's our Elohim. He's our Adonai. How should I respond to him? That I know him better than anything else. Shall we pray? I says our bow and eyes are closed. I want you to talk to yourself. I don't know what the Lord is doing in your life. First of all, if you are here and you don't even have Jesus, you don't know Jesus Christ. No Jesus, no life. My friend, don't kid yourself that coming to church will save you. Or being baptized will save you. There's only one name that saves, the name Jesus Christ. Are you born again? Are you born again? Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. If you are not, please don't leave here without talking to us. If you doubt, if there's any doubt of, of, of my, my salvation, ask. And we are here to let you know. He is life for us. And if you're a Christian, who is Jesus to you? Why are you doing what you are doing? Why do you come to church? Why do you want a good education for your children? A nice family. Who is Jesus to you? Some of us might say, well, I know this head, head knowledge. I know it. But oh God, I want Jesus Christ to mean so much for me that he's my God, the very God. And also that, God, I want to respond right to him. Yes, I go through life frustrated. A lot of things happen. But oh, Jesus, would you make yourself real to me once again? Whatever is your heartbeat, as the piano plays, you can come before the Lord. You can be in your seat. Talk to God. 